Hey everybody, welcome back to part 5 of Let's Create uh, Black Ops Zombies in Unreal Engine. I'm sorry it's been so long since part 4. I kind of had to unexpectedly move and it's just uh, taking up a lot of my time. But uh, enough on that, let's jump right in. So we are going to add a muzzle flash first. So I'm going to go to the marketplace and import the Military Weapons Dark Pack, which at this time is free because it has the muzzle flashes in it. And the cool thing about this pack is you can actually add these weapons as well into your... Uh, weapons in the game if you'd like. So if you're using an engine version later than 4.21, at the moment this pack isn't available for those, so what you need to do is import it into a project that is 4.21 or lower, then migrate the assets to your project by right clicking on the folder and choosing migrate. There shouldn't be any issues because these are all just regular assets. In the weapon master, let's make a variable called muzzle flash of type particle system, and we'll set the assault rifle muzzle flash as the default. In the first person character's fire trace, after the line trace, spawn, a, spawn an emitter, and the emitter template is going to be the equipped weapons muzzle flash variable. We want to attach it to a component, and that's going to be the equipped weapons gun component, so it sticks to our gun. And then the attach point name is going to be B underscore gun underscore muzzle flash. This is the bone at the tip of the muzzle. We need a rotator variable in the weapon master called muzzle rot because the rotation of this bone is not correct for every single gun, and we want to make the default 0, 90 on the Y, and 0. Go back to the first person character and plug that variable into the rotation. For the location type, we want to do snap to target and keep world scale. All muzzle flashes should be rotated correctly except for the KA-74, where the Y should be set back to 0 in muzzle rot. Test it out and our guns should all have muzzle flashes. And the great thing about this military weapon pack is it has sounds too, so we're going to uh, use that to add sounds. In the weapon master, let's create a variable called fire sound of type sound Q, and we're going to once again default the rifle fire Q. In the first person character fire trace, after the muzzle flash spawn, a sound attached, and we want the sound to be the equipped weapons fire sound variable. Uh, the attached component is going to be the gun, of course, and the location type will be snap to target and keep world scale, just like the emitter. For the attenuation settings, set it to weapon shot, and now we should be able to hear the guns when we fire them. Uh, we also want to have impact effects for, for wherever the bullet hit, so after the spawn sound, ask if the line trace hit. If it's false, we're going to continue. If it's true, we want to spawn an emitter at the location. The emitter by default will just make it stone large, which is a uh, impact for stone. Location is going to be the impact point, and the rotation, we want to make sure it's rotated the same way um, that the normal of the mesh is facing. So we're going to get the normal and then the rotation from X vector. And then after that, we want to continue to the rest of the code. So let's turn off the line trace debug to test, and that looks really good, except there's no bullet holes left, so let's add some bullet holes as well. There's no free bullet holes on the marketplace, at least none that I could find, so I just looked up bullet hole texture and I found a free one. So let's create a material called M underscore bullet hole, and let's change the type to defer decal. We want to set the blend mode to translucent and the decal blend mode debuffer translucent color to normal roughness. And then we can just add the texture and plug in RGB to base color and alpha to opacity. In the first person character, spawn the decal attached after the spawn emitter at location in the fire trace. The material will be the decal material, of course, and the size, let's make it 10, 10, and 10. The component is going to be the hit component, and the hit bone name is the attach point name. Location will be the impact point, and the rotation will be the normal rotation from X vector. But only for the Y and the Z. For X, we want a, ro we want a random float so it doesn't face the same direction every single time. Um, so let's get a random float and range and put in the two values 0 and 360. The location type will be the world position, and the lifespan we can set to 60 seconds. You can set this to whatever you want for however long you want your bullet hole to last before it fades away. And now when we shoot, bullet holes will appear. Uh, we can also add a reload sound for when we reload. So in the weapon master, let's add three more variables. We'll call it lower sound, raise sound, and reload sound. And we're all going to default it to the rifle. In the first person character, go to reload animation. And before the timeline is called, let's spawn the sound attached for lowering the gun. And we'll just make the sound the equipped weapon lower sound variable. And the component will be the gun, of course. Uh, off the ammo update, we're going to do the reload sound, so it reloads while the gun is being pulled down. Uh, 
in the timeline, create another event track called raise sound and let's put it at the keyframe at 0.75. And that's when we can call the sound for raising our gun back up. So now if we listen to that, that all sounds good. Uh, you might notice while firing that sometimes the SMG in the assault rifle uh, stops making noise before we're done firing. And that's because there's a maximum amount of sound cues that can be spawned. The default is 16, and these two weapons are trying to shoot more than 16 times before the first sound cue goes away. So, for these two guns, and any other guns you find in the future that might have the same problem, uh, we need to make it so it can spawn more than 16 times so we don't get this effect. So open up the queue for the pistol and the rifle firing sounds uh, and change the concurrency overrides max count to 32. Another side note is I lowered the fire audio volume for the pistol firing, which I used for the SMG because um, I thought it was kind of annoyingly too loud. All right, so with all these few simple steps, our guns sound and feel a lot better. Uh, here's a quick list of the muzzle flashes and sounds used per each weapon. And the next episode is going to be about making weapons sway. So I'm excited to see you there. Hey you, are you ever sitting around thinking, man, I wish there was a 93 episode course on creating a first person shooter in Unreal Engine, maybe with about 14 hours of content or so, and set at an affordable and understandable price for the amount of information offered. Well, if you are, I'm about to knock you off your socks because I'm offering that course and another one coming soon. First person shooter games seem intimidating to learn, but through our 11 sections, we go through everything you need to know, such as different types of advanced weapons, common FPS mechanics such as round based gameplay, character movement, purchasable weapons, ADS, gameplay balancing, and much more. Thanks for sticking around to the end, and I'm excited to share more game dev content in the next video.